As a business owner, one of the kinds of graphics you're going to be creating the most often are social media graphics. Social media is something that you are constantly working on, constantly creating graphics for. And so it's really important to know how to create consistent and cohesive graphics that suit your branding, that is going to help build your brand identity rather than create confusion because you're always doing slightly different things. And you also don't want your graphics to always look identical. You want some variety in there while always staying on brand. In this video, we're going to dive into Canva and both look at how to create your social media graphics from scratch, keeping them on brand, and also how you can adapt templates to make them suit your branding and adapt them in a way that feels like the right fit for your brand and doesn't look so much like a template anymore. So let's get into Canva and start designing. All right, so the first thing that we want to be sure that we have set up when we're going to create our own social media graphics is a brand kit. Now, if you don't have Canva Pro, you just need to make sure that you have all your brand elements gathered together. Maybe you have a folder on your computer, your brand style guide somewhere close by, and also somewhere where you can grab all the relevant brand graphics. Just make sure that you are organized with your brand. That way you're going to be more consistent and cohesive with how you actually roll it out through your graphics because then you can easily access everything you need and you also know how to use them. So this is why it's also important to have a style guide, not just simply have all your bits there. So when it comes to the brand key, in Canva, you want to be adding in all your logo. You want to be adding your logo and any logo variations you might have. So if you want to use like a sub mark instead for your social media graphics, you are going to need that. You also want to add in your brand colors and you may want to even make a few different palettes. So here you've got add new and add palette. So if you want to actually separate your palettes to help you stay more organized, if you struggle with remembering what colors do I use for certain things, and you may actually want to create separate palettes to help you really feel organized in that way. So while I've got here just the color of my logo and then all my other colors, I'm using my branding all the time. I know what I typically use different colors for. And so I'm not constantly having to remind myself, oh, that color's for this, that color's for that. But if you are a bit unsure of that, if you need to remember, okay, these are the colors that I use for backgrounds. These are the colors that I use for my type and things like that. Then it may actually be handy for you to actually split them up into several palettes to help you remember how best to use these. Then you have your fonts. So what's really handy about this is it lets you put your fonts into different sections based on what they're used for. So your heading fonts, your subheader fonts, your body fonts. So you can again, get your fonts really organized so you know what font to use for what. Because we can't just simply say, okay, they're my fonts because you could actually apply them in all sorts of different ways and it's not gonna actually feel as consistent. So I'll show you soon how we would do this and how it can actually not work if you aren't organized in terms of what things are used in what scenarios. So then you can also end it in your brand voice if you want to. You can add in some photos. Photos is so helpful with social media graphics. You're always needing photos to use in your graphics. So having some brand photos and actually putting them in your brand kit is going to make the whole process of working on social media graphics so much faster and easier because you can just grab the photos you need. You're not having to go and re-upload them because you've lost them in your uploads and you're not confused about what should I be using. It's all there in one place. Easy for you to find the right photo to use. Then you've got a section for graphics. So if you've got any kind of graphics, whether they're backgrounds, little graphic elements, illustrations, anything like that, you can add those in too, which is very helpful again for creating social media graphics because you're not then going into Canva and just grabbing random elements in Canva and trying to just put them in your brand colors. You can do that if something you feel does work for your brand, but have the more things you have to work with that are your brand elements, the more you're going to create graphics that are very consistent and cohesive. And then finally, you have a section for icons. So if you have any icons, you also want to add them in too. So it's just about making sure you spend the time actually bringing things in here. You might actually have things on your computer. You just haven't brought them into that brand kit on Canva, but it's really going to help make that process easier if it's there. You're not having to keep going back to your uploads, uploading things off the computer. It's all very organized, all in one place and easy to grab and use. Of course, you do need Canva Pro to have this. So I really recommend it because it just makes things so much quicker and easier. All right, so let's say we're going to create a social media graphic. So the first thing we want to think about is what are we actually creating here? So you need to get the right sizing. So let's say we want to create an Instagram post. So we can put in Instagram. 
Now, do we want a single graphic or do we want a carousel? That's the other thing you need to think about is your content. What am I actually going to be creating and how do I want to format that? Do I want it just in one single post or do I want to spread it out over several pages? Really think about that. So let's grab an Instagram post here. So if we're starting from scratch, this is where knowing what your content is, is really, really important to start with thinking, okay, what am I going to actually be creating here? So let's say we want to create five ways to do something and we want to put those five things on the page. So we first want to grab our text. So if you come in here to text, it's instantly going to put your brand fonts here. So we know, okay, my heading, right? Put it on the page. So five ways to get creative juices flowing. So what I would recommend is first just get that content on the page and then we can start playing around with design. So let's now we'll get our body font and we're going to just put in those five ways. So our op so we could have it so it goes around the page different ways or we could do it more like a list format. So we'll just put in those five ways. We'll do them as five separate pieces and then we'll think about how we might want to format it. All right, so we've got our five things, we've got our title, and now we've got to start thinking about formatting. So let's think about first our background. So what could we do here? We could use one of our brand background colors. So I've got my colors here. I know which ones I normally use as background. Usually I go for one of these neutral colors. Occasionally I'll use this light blue. And if I'm doing something where I'm going to put light text on, I might use that darker color, but I don't use that very often. It's more if I do an overlay, if I want to put a photo and then overlay this on top. So you really do need to know how do you use your colors to know what's going to be appropriate. And for the sake of variety, you may also want to have a look at how is your social media look right now? If this is the next post, or even if you're planning things out, how can you add some variety? So if you recently had something that was this color, maybe you want to do a slightly different color, maybe something darker or just a different tone just to make some variety there so make sure you're you know switching things up not always doing the exact same thing every single time that way you avoid it being a little too samey think about how you can have a little bit of variety within those limitations of your brand so maybe it's a different background color this time maybe it's a photo as a background this time or maybe we're going to just do the style of this post very differently. So just think about how can you make it a little bit different from that last post, the most recent thing, so it's not sitting right next to something that's gonna look just the same. You're gonna add a little bit of variety to it. So we could use one of these colors, or we could also go back into our brand kit, and we could use a pattern or some other kind of background that we've got here. So we could use something like this or something like this. So let's say we decided to go with that one. So now what we want to do is we want to make our title nice and big. Now something that is very handy when it comes to any kind of graphic you make is giving yourself guidelines to make sure things are lined up nicely. So to do that you want to go into file settings, add guides, then in here you want to choose custom now with something like a social media template, you don't want too many columns because we haven't got too much content. So for this one, we may just use two columns because we might just want that center line. We probably aren't going to do anything too fancy with this. So it is one of those things where you need to think about what you're going to be adding. If you're going to be adding in some photos and that, you may want extra guidelines to help you. But I think all we need really is just to know that center line for this one. So if you're adding a photo, so let's go into our photos. And what you would want to do with your guidelines is snap it to a guide. So here, like we would have that and then say we put these over this side and we want to position them so they're all the same. So you can press tidy up and left align so they're all together. So we could put them against that one there and then have the photo go against this one here. So that's what you'd use your guidelines for is making things nice and neat in that way. So, so we'd make it nice and tidy by putting things onto our guides. So if something like this too, you may even want that margin in between a bit bigger so there's a bit more gap. So it's really about thinking, what is my content? What am I using? Am I using photos and text? Am I using just text? I'm using graphic elements. How much content is there that needs to be organized? And setting your page up to make that work. So in this case, I think we'll just go center align. So we want my text center align position. See, if you select it on go position, that really helps you get everything nicely tidied up. We can press tidy up, make sure 
and then we can put it in position here. We might make it a bit bigger. Remember when you're creating something too for social media, it's going to be so much smaller. So we shrink it down. People are going to see that quite small. So you've got to keep in mind when you're working on it, you might think, oh, the text, I like it that size. Oh, if I put that big, it looks too big. But remember, it's going to be viewed a lot smaller. So big text is going to be easier to read. So yeah, it is handy sometimes if you're a bit unsure about your text size is to shrink it down and have a look. Think, is that still readable? Is that something people can still view? Remembering that it's going to be a lot smaller on your phone. So now let's center this. Now let's add some capitals here. All right, now we're thinking about color again. So selecting our text and this and this one here is the color that you typically use for text. So I'm going to select that. And then we want to add my logo to it. So see how easy it is when you've got your, so see how easy it is when you've got your brand kit set up. You can just quickly be grabbing all these things and putting it together so fast. And it's going to always create something that's on brand because you've got everything there, super organized quickly create something on brand. So that's a very simple example. As I said, you want to have some variety in there. So let's say we do that same post again, but we want to do it differently this time. So let's have just a plain background this time. Let's left align this. Let's change up our guidelines for this one. And let's make it three columns. So what we want to do here, so we want this to sit on the margins. You'll see the margin, it goes pink. So then we want the text to go across two columns here. And then we want this one to go across. Just tidy this up, left aligned. So it starts on this middle column here and goes across. So it can go as far as where that next margin is. Then we can go back to our elements and we can look for a photo that we think would suit. I'm going to make that photo sit over here. And this is where we can notice if something doesn't look quite right. So I feel like three lines of text for our header looks a bit too much. Now, maybe for our header here, we want to make it a little bit more interesting. So maybe we choose a different brand color. And there we have another post. So as you can see, we've used that same content and we've thought about different ways to do it. But both cases, they feel on brand. They feel relevant to my branding because I've thought about what colors do I use in what instances, what what fonts do I use in what instance? I have all my brand elements and things ready to go and put in. And so it's really easy to put something together and keep it on brand. Now, let's say I'm working with a template. So here I have a template. This one is a carousel. So we've got quite a few here. We don't need to use all of them today, but just showing you how you can adapt a template to make it on brand for you. But what we're going to do is start selecting things and actually changing it to our branding. Now, if we just told it just to put our branding however we wanted, but let's just, I'll show you, if we just press on here, shuffle, it's going to just pick some random colors for us. Now, something like that, let's say it did that. I do not use that red color at all for backgrounds. I do not use that red color for huge amounts at all. It's only ever used in very small quantities. So if I just went with what Canva suggested and just went with, yeah, let's just press shuffle, apply to all pages. That's not going to look on brand for me because it's not the way that I apply my stuff. And so that's what's really important to be very clear about how you apply your colors, how you apply your fonts so that you're not just randomly doing it. So doing something like that would not look on brand for me. It would not work. And so that's why it's important to really be clear about this stuff. If I scroll down and have a look, it's like put that red there and there. Even in that iPad, that is just not what I want. That is not on brand for me. So that's why I'm not a fan of this shuffle thing. You can use it and you might get ones that are good like that one. That might be like, yes, that is what I want. So you'd want to click it several times until you get one you want. But even like, like that, that is not on brand at all. The red font and then the gray background, that is not something I would do. So as you can see, just using something like that, you would need to be aware. So if you could do that, if you want to speed things up, just shuffle through, see what it suggests, but don't just stick with just whatever it gives you straight away. Make sure it picks one that actually is right for your brand. All right. So what we can do is we select something like, let's select our header font. 
you want to choose our actual font we use and you want to click here change all so instantly what it does it applies it to every page so if we've got lots of pages it's going to apply it to all then we want to choose our color and again change all so keep pressing that change all it's going to speed things up suddenly things are changing very fast to what's appropriate for our brand now another thing that can happen as you can see here is some fonts are you know bigger than others they're going to render slightly differently don't just let it do whatever it does if something is turning out too big and not quite right do go through that template and adjust it so again with our photos all we need to do is just drag and drop as you can see really easy with a template now this bit here we've got a background image so we could use one of our patterns if we wanted something like that now this is where you'd also need to notice if things need to change in terms of well this is a dark background so now this needs to we need to choose one of our lighter brand colors you wouldn't want to click change all in that instance if you're doing it differently for different pages because we don't want these gray things like this to suddenly go white so do be aware if you've got pages where things are changing from light backgrounds to dark backgrounds and you want the font colors to change sometimes you don't want to click change all again and then have things that were dark that worked well and now all turn so basically this is what you would do with a template it was you would just go through and adapt things making sure you're doing it in a way that is relevant to your brand now if you've got graphic elements like say this arrow here if you had something that was more relevant to your brand if you had your own style of arrow that you use you may want to switch that out don't feel like you have to use everything that's in a template if something doesn't feel quite right to your brand switch it up change it don't just stick with exactly what they've given you if you think something else is going to fit your branding and your style better change it up so just use it as a starting point to get you going we could even add in extra things so let's say we decided we want to add in this that wasn't something that was in the template but i just wanted to add it to give it a bit more flair and it feel a bit more unique to me so it doesn't just feel like the same as anyone else that would use this template. I hope that got you inspired and that was helpful in terms of thinking about how you create social media graphics and keeping them on brand for you. As I said, the thing you really need to keep in mind is what are your brand elements and how should they be used and making sure that you're applying them appropriately and also using a little bit of variety, not always using the exact same color as your background every single time or not always using the exact same template every time, varying it up with different templates, different layouts. So it's really about having rules, but also having variety within those rules. So I hope you found that helpful because creating consistent and cohesive on-brand social media templates is so important for building up your brand identity. You really want to be building a strong identity that's consistent because that's going to build trust because the more people become familiar with your brand because you've stuck with this same identity, kept it consistent, the more people are going to find your brand familiar and therefore trust you. So this is a really important skill to have. Now if you need to go a whole step back and you actually need to work on your branding then I have a free interactive workbook that you can download. Four step process to go from vision to visuals. This will walk you through the steps that you need to take to create a really strong brand identity. So if that's something you're stuck on make sure you check out the link below and download that.